I remember thinking to myself, this is what it feels like to die. Because I think we've all wondered that at some point. What is what does it feel like? What's it like? And I had that aha moment of, oh, this is what it feels like to die. And it didn't scare me or it didn't bother me. It was almost a neutral statement. And then right at that moment, I completely popped out of my body and I was very quickly on the ceiling of the area where I was in the ER. And I was looking down at myself and I saw the whole scene. I saw... Hello and welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are in the world right now. I'm so excited about our guest today, Jane Thompson. She had a profound near-death experience or NDE. Jane Thompson recalls leaving her body, looking down on her body and being embraced by an incredible white light. Jane is an intuitive healer, spiritual coach, near-death experiencer, and international speaker. This is her story, and this is her passion. Jane, I'm so excited to have you on Passion Harvest today. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's really great to be here. I'm, I'm, I mean, this has been a long time coming, and I'm really excited to talk to you. And I want to talk to you also about just safe hands healing and all the wonderful work you're doing now. But first, I'd love to start, if you feel comfortable, with your near-death experience. Sure. My near-death experience was August 22nd, 2008. It happened at 1.20 p.m. And it was sudden. It was a sudden illness that came on. And about two weeks before, I hadn't quite been myself. Um, I'd had a couple of hard nights where I wasn't feeling well, but the symptoms were coming and going and I couldn't quite identify what was going on. Um, So I never went to the doctor, but the night before my NDE, um, my boyfriend came over and we had dinner together and I wasn't very hungry and I was lying down on the couch. I was really tired and he put his hand on my the side of my back and he said he barely touched me and i just jumped from the pain and i thought to myself and you know famous last words i thought well even if i feel fine tomorrow when i wake up i'm still making an appointment to go to the doctor because something weird is going on well the next morning I woke up and um, it was very early in the morning. The sun was just starting to come up. So there was just a little light coming into my room and I couldn't move. I was very hot and I wanted to take the blanket off of me, but I couldn't move. And it's because I was in so much pain. I couldn't move my body and I was going in and out. Um, I was going back to sleep and then I would wake up and then somehow I got enough strength to push the covers off of me and my cell phone was on the table right next to the bed and I reached over. It took every ounce of strength I had. I reached over to get the phone and I called a family member and I said, I don't feel good. I I think I have a really high fever. I'm in a lot of pain. I need you to take me to the doctor. And so she said, okay, um, let me get dressed and I'll come over and get you. Well, then when she hung up the phone, she told her husband, Jane just called and she's not feeling well. So I'll go take her to the doctor. And he said, well, have you met Jane? She doesn't usually wake up this early in the morning and make a request like that. He said, it sounds bad. Um, So she called me back and she said, I'm taking you to the ER. And uh, she came and got me. I remember very little. I was just kind of, it was a hazy time for me because I was in so much pain. And um, they came out from the hospital. They brought a wheelchair and helped me into it. And I couldn't even hold my head up. My head was just hanging And, um, they took me in, 
got me all registered and took me back right away for a CT scan because the symptoms that I was describing were consistent with a kidney stone, but it also sounded like it could have been something else, like maybe some really bad ovarian cysts. So we were trying to identify what was going on and everything around me was very amplified. Um, People talking sounded like they were screaming in my ears. And I even remember the clock on the wall, the second hand as it was going, I could hear it and it was loud. Everything was just so incredibly amplified. And they took me back for the CT scan and they were trying to put the IV in. Um, But we had discovered that my temperature, my fever was 106 degrees, which is very high, very dangerous. And I was very dehydrated because of that. So they had to keep trying and trying with the needle. And I remember I was starting to leave my body at that point. I was starting to float out of my body. But each time the nurse would poke my arm with the needle, it was like it was bringing the awareness back to the physical for me. And I was coming back into my body. And um, it was very frustrating because I wanted to leave, but I kept getting pulled back in. They finally got the needle in. Um, I went in for the CT scan. I remember very little about that. Afterwards, I was on the hospital gurney and they took me back into the room in the emergency room where I was and closed the curtains. And that's when I really had what I think was enough peace and enough space to just get out of there. And um, I noticed the external, I noticed the people that were there And then I immediately closed my eyes and it was just like, I locked, I locked myself into my internal world and I could feel the heat from the fever. And I was also freezing cold at the same time. And I started convulsing and I could feel the veins in my head. I could feel that pressure in my head. Um, It felt like the veins were going to just pop right out. Right at that moment, I disconnected from the pain. I wasn't experiencing the pain anymore. And I went very internal. And I was, it was almost like I was watching a movie of what was happening inside of my body. And I was just observing. It was just from an observer perspective I could see the blood pumping. I could see the cells. I could see my internal organs. And I was just noticing. And I had a sense that I was looking at a dying body. And I remember thinking to myself, this is what it feels like to die. Because I think we've all wondered that at some point. What is what does it feel like? What's it like? And I had that aha moment of, oh, this is what it feels like to die. And it didn't scare me or it didn't bother me. It was almost a neutral statement. There really wasn't any emotion attached to the knowledge that that's what was happening. And then right at that moment, I completely popped out of my body and I was very quickly on the ceiling of the area where I was in the ER and I was looking down at myself and I saw the whole scene. I saw people that I knew standing there. I saw doctors, I saw nurses, I saw all of the equipment. And then I noticed myself. I recognized that that was me, but I could tell that was just my body because I didn't see life in my body. But I felt very alive up here, up on the ceiling. And and I, I had a moment where I was trying to orient to the situation because I felt myself up here, but I saw myself down here. And then that's when I realized, oh, that that is what it's like to die. And I'm dead. And I was observing for a little while. 
And then I very, very slowly started floating up backwards. I was still looking down. And as I was floating backwards, the ceiling to the hospital was no longer there. The building, the hospital itself was just suddenly no longer there. The further and further up I got. And I noticed little balls of white light buzzing around, you know, hundreds of them. And I remember thinking, boy, they're very um, active, almost frantic, it seemed to me, because I was very peaceful as I was observing all of this. And I had this knowing that those are souls. Those were souls of the people that were in the hospital and they were working or they were patients. Um, and so I just observed for a little while, but I was really taken back by how busy they were. It just didn't make sense to me about why everybody was just so busy running around. And I could see that all of these souls were connected by a thin iridescent line, almost the way if you see a spider web in a corner and when the sunlight hits it just right, that's what the iridescent lines looked like. And it was beautiful. And I was noticing oneness and I was noticing connection and um, how we're all our own little individual souls and we're all combined as well. So I was observing that for a little while and then just for what felt like a split second, everything went black. And I I believe that that's the void that I was in, the, the in-between space, um, almost like maybe outer space, but it, it was just black, but not scary. And then I very quickly went into the tunnel and it was fast and it was thrilling and exhilarating and it was almost like the thrill you get if you go on a roller coaster ride and you're really enjoying it and um the tunnel ride was very quick and then the next thing you know I popped out of the tunnel into this beautiful peaceful loving warm white light and the tunnel was very black but this, this white light was bright and it was brilliant. And so I had to orient there for a second to realize what was happening. And immediately I felt peace, peace like I have never experienced before. And it was just very comforting. And I don't believe there's temperature there, but for some reason... I say that I felt warm. It's 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 the way you would feel when you get a really good hug or the temperature of the other person feels really nice and um just just the right amount of everything is what was taking place. And so I was taking in the peace, feeling the warmth, feeling the comfort, and then I started feeling the love and unconditional love. It was love for me. It didn't matter what I had done or hadn't done in my life. It didn't matter. It just loved me. It just loved me just because I'm me. And I could feel that. And at, especially as I was feeling that love, I started feeling this healing taking place. I could feel my soul. I could feel my own vibration or personality. And I still felt a part of the light. So I was a part of it and I was distinct as well. And this part of me, my soul, I could kind of look and see where the wounding was, um, where the traumas were, where the pain was, um, where the emotional pain and discomfort from living life on earth had been. 
And this love was healing those wounds. And the wounds felt like holes and, and the love was filling the holes back in when I was being made whole again. And I felt like me, I felt complete. I felt healed. And I had a little brief hint of that feeling of this is who I am. This is who I was kind of the original blueprint of when I came into the world and then life happened and um, ego was formed and all of those things. So I had this glimpse of this is original me. This is true me. This is authentic me. And that was very, very comforting. And I was loved for all of that. So as I was taking all of this in and really, really enjoying it, I was very much in the present moment. I wasn't thinking about life back on planet earth. I was, I was just taking it all in. I heard that inner voice or that inaudible voice say, you need to go back. And that was startling. That was not what I wanted to hear. Um, I just wanted to take in more of that love and that peace and that replenishment. And, and then I heard it again, you have to go back. And I said, no, 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 I don't want to go back. Please don't make me go. But I knew, I knew it was happening. I knew this was not something I was going to be able to negotiate my way out of. And um, I heard it again, you need to go back. And then immediately I went backwards in the tunnel, it was very fast through the tunnel, um, and then right back into my body through the top of my head. And it, it very quickly registered of, okay, I'm back, I'm back in my body, I'm back in this world. And then I don't remember anything until much, much later that evening when I um, was taken to pre-op for my first surgery that followed. Wow, Jane. Oh my gosh, that was so beautiful. And thank you for sharing your profound experience. Just a few questions and I'd love to move on. Uh, what was the white light? You talk about it or refer to it as it. What was the white light, the embracing, all-encompassing love? Yeah, I think a lot of my language around that comes from doing a lot of hospice work. And when you do hospice work, I mean, you are with people who are grieving, you know, anticipating the loss of their loved ones and then the person who is actually passing. And so when you do hospice work, you learn to talk to people from all different religions, all different cultures. Um, and so it does become a bit of an it statement. What the white light is to me is, and I've gone through phases of my own processing with this, of trying to figure out what was that? Um, I call the white light God. That's, that's what I choose to call it. Um, I believe ultimately white light is where we all came from. It's um, source really where we all came from. And um, I think it's okay for people to name it, whatever fits for them. For me, that's, that was God and, and it source energy where, what we are all a part of and where we all came from. I just feel so comforted talking to you and it's it's so nice to have that reassurance that we are so loved, really, divinely loved. Um, what would you say, many people have this fear, what would you say to those people that are afraid of dying? I would say I understand. I get it. Um, I think, you know, that's very common fear. And what I would say is there's nothing to be afraid of. What waits for you is perfect love, deep, unconditional love, a healing, a replenishment, 
everything that you've suffered through, everything that you've endured in this life, you will be made whole again. You will feel complete again. And there's nothing to worry about. And there's nothing to be afraid of. And I think also what people are really afraid of is how am I going to die? And that's different for everyone. For me, it was, you know, very quick illness. Other people it can, you know, it's longer than that. And there's a lot more suffering. And what I will say is no matter how each one of us goes, no matter what our transition looks like, when we do get to the other side, this suffering isn't even a factor. And um, the suffering, if you endure any suffering, that is healed as well. Um, and so I think there's peace in that too. Thanks, Jane. One more question and we'll move on. And, and you you probably get this question all the time. And it's such a hard question, but in your opinion, why are we here? Why are we having this human experience? We are here to learn. We are here to love. We are here to help each other, to love each other when we can. We're here to learn from each other. And we are here to evolve as souls and to, um, you know, especially the time that we're in right now, there's a, there's a lot happening and, and we have a especially interesting time for being here of, you know, there's such a huge influx of light coming in and we're here to all facilitate that in our own special and unique ways. And, um, there are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of reasons that we're here, but if I needed to simplify it, I would say we are here to learn and we are here to love. Thank you. That was beautiful. And and for those that are suffering, everyone has different degrees and, and so many different experiences. How can we move through suffering? Well, it doesn't sound fun when I say it out loud, but it's the truth of how to move through it is we have to feel our feelings. And um, the emotions that are coming up for us, because all of these triggers, that's where our learning is. And once we identify the triggers, then we know what is needing our attention so we can heal it. And so some days it's harder than others to feel what you're feeling rather than suppressing it. And so on those days, maybe you don't feel the whole thing. You just open the valve a little bit, or maybe not at all, but we are complex um when we are here in the human body and on planet earth with gravity and um anything that you can do to heal yourself with what you have available to you each day you just do the best that you can do thanks jane i have to say we were speaking before the interview I get lots of emails. I'm sure you do as well. I love your monthly, is it monthly emails? And and a safe couple times hand, a, month. a couple of maybe and safe hands healing and all the work you're doing. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that with our audience? Yeah. After I came back from my NDE, it didn't take me long to realize that that healing that I received um, and that complete that wholeness, that complete original me that I felt in the light. As soon as I came back into my body, it's like I started picking all my baggage back up and, and the trauma started reappearing. And I was still healed, but I still realized I had some work to do. And I almost had a goal of, I want to feel as complete here on earth as I did in light as, as much as possible. And I want to feel as peaceful as much as possible. And so it became this personal journey to begin with of how can I, what can I do or who can I seek out or what methods can I use 
to fill some of these holes back in that started reappearing. And as I did that more and more for myself, I started to understand that I could do that for other people too. And so I'm a healer and and the work is all intuitive and the goal or the aim is to help people heal their traumas, their wounding, you know, looking at conditioning and patterning so you can get back to true you because true you that was true me in the light and true you is peaceful and true you is abundant and it doesn't mean life is suddenly perfect but when things come up it, it sure feels a lot more manageable to handle it and so my work has been for myself and for clients and friends or family members that are interested it's helping you heal so you can get back to true you. And so that's what the emails are about. It's always little tips or advice of things that you can do or ways to wrap your head around what is true you anyway. And and I was telling you before the interview that delights me that you um, enjoy the email so much because they're truly channeled. When I sit down to write an email It's not me thinking it's, it's flowing out. And so I'm glad that you like them and and I hope that they're helping a lot of people. Thank you. There's something special about them. (laughs) So where's the best place for people to connect with you? Safehandshealing.com is my website. I've got tons of resources for healing there. Um, I've got workshops. I do a group healing the first day of each month. And I also do private one-on-one sessions and every interview I've ever done is there too. And I think sometimes it can be very healing just to watch these interviews because when people that have had NDEs are speaking, that peace and that love is somehow flowing out of us. And so you feel that too. And I think that's why people say they almost get addicted to watching and listening to stories about NDEs, because I think that's a very, very healing thing. Thanks, Jane. I will leave a link below in the show notes, but I, I'm just getting the words. It's almost like an activation in some way, sharing your experiences or others. It's it's activating the the individuals that are listening. Yes, it, it creates openings. Um, and to hear about what is on the other side and to hear about what is waiting for us when we transition out, it brings that awareness in and it brings the feeling of it in. And yes, it's very much an activation and it creates the opening and um the more and more that you listen to these, I think the awareness becomes more potent and you can just naturally begin to feel it more and more. I loved having you on the show. Jane, is there anything else you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience that I haven't asked you today? I I would just, I would like to, I would like, to encourage everyone because I, I have enough clients that I see, you know, consistently what's going on in the collective. And, and I see how that ties into what's going on with me. And I think right now people need to be told, and it sounds very simple. Um, but I think people need to be told everything is going to be okay. And that makes me tear up because I really do believe that. And I think if if the the light could give any message right now, it would be everything is going to be okay. You are on the right path, even though it may not feel that way. Where you are today is exactly where you're meant to be. And that can change in a split second. It, you know, it's Life is very fluid. And so if you're losing hope, know that 
60 seconds from now, something can get better. And I just want everybody to know everything's going to be okay. Stay the course, let that light in, let that love in, even from wherever you can find it. If it's from a pet, if it's from a child, if it's listening to the story of an NDE, it's just, we're coming out of a difficult time in the world and there are still a lot of difficult things going on, but I do believe there is order in all of this disorder. We just don't have access to the complete picture, but I do really feel like there's order in, in all of the insanity. Oh, Jane, that was such a beautiful way to end the show. <laughs> thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. Really, really thank you so very much. Thank you for having me and thank you for all that you do to help get all of the love out there. Oh, thank you. And you too. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. If you liked this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews.